Hello, Bregave here and welcome to this Minecraft tutorial that concerns a super auto smelter guys. A super simple super auto smelter. Say that fast three times. The thing with this auto smelter is that it's driven by rails and I have always found tutorials about this stuff really complicated so I wanted to make my own and try and make it as simple as possible for you guys to join in. Uh, but first, before we do that, let's, let's look at the functionality of this super auto smelter. First of all, you can have it automatically go as soon as the, there is something in the chest, or you can lock it. That means that it stays there until you are done. And as you can see here, as soon as, well, as you saw there, as soon as that goes, that starts to go as well. We'll get back to that later on. If you have it in lock mode, like this, you can, for instance, place a shulker box up here. That'll empty itself into the um, hopper and then into the minecart there with the chest. Then when you're done, you can just press the button and retrieve your chocolate box again. The other way to input things in here is to input it straight into this hopper uh, or place a chest up here temporarily, you could do as well. So that's that for that side functionality. Over on this side here, we have two things. We can have the fuel automatically go or we can lock the fuel uh, cart. And, uh, and just uh, let it go when when we want it to. Um, but we can also open this hatch and put in fuel here. As you can see, there's smelting going on here in these 16 furnaces of our auto super smelter. The produce will end up in this chest down here. And I think that's about it for functionality, guys. Now, on the back here, we've looked briefly already. Let's start with the fuel input. Basically, you put fuel in this chest it simply goes down into the hopper, into the minecart with a chest here. And then of course the hoppers here point into the back of the furnaces. So if, uh, if the, if the minecart goes here, it'll empty fuel evenly into these hoppers and then into the furnaces. Now that's a similar story with the ore that we're going to smelt. <coughs> Hello. <laughs> the ores that we're going to smelt, they, they end up in here. Then there's hoppers going in to the top of the furnaces here, and they basically just turn around and goes back. Now you may, might have noticed that there is a detector rail here, and what that does is, that is what sends the fuel cart along. Once this is released, it'll go, and then once it comes to here, that'll start going, and they'll go together back, and then the fuel cart will return back again. And there are some things here going on, some redstone guys. And uh, basically this here is the lock, so th th now the, the thing is locked, that means that this repeater is locked here basically. What it otherwise does is it senses, because underneath here, underneath here is another detector rail, so it senses when there is something in the minecart with a chest, and if so that repeater, or that uh, comparator fires along here, Opening a fence gate, which is what releases the minecart. I'll show you that mechanic. So like that, it'll go. So that's all it takes for it to uh, to run away. So <clears throat> basically, as soon as there is any sort of item in here, it'll go. Except we have the lock on. So as you can see now, by the way, there is the lock on that repeater. If we take away the lock, you hear the minecart or the fence gate go. And then comes back and the fuel cart is going as we speak and it'll keep uh, going here now backwards and forwards this cart here until it's empty which it is now the last thing of redstone interest is th this button here which will break the shulker boxes basically a repeater going into this block which fires this piston but there's also a piece of redstone here which will light up when this block is charged and that goes back in here and that locks this hopper so that um, when, with, when the shulker box is broken, it actually falls down here, rather than being sucked up by the hopper. So, to build this super auto smelter, you will need the following materials. 4 chests, 51 hoppers, 35 powered rails, 2 detector rails, a re comparator, 4 repeater, a stem button, 2 levers, 16 furnaces, and 2 minecarts with chests. You will also need a bunch of blocks of varying kinds. So, to start building this, you will need a double chest, and then you place 16 hoppers leading into that chest. In, into that chest, even. A double chest, like this. 
Then you place all your 16 furnaces on top of these hoppers like this. This is all very standard stuff. You do this in pretty much every auto smelter. Then you place hoppers going into the back of these like this. This is where our fuel is going to come. And then finally you place hoppers going into the top of the furnace as well. This is where our ores and other things we want to smelt will come in. Next up, let's sort out the top rails here and the, also the bottom rails in the end. Now, so you take a block here, place two blocks after the top hopper uh, and place another block up there. Place a temporary rail there and place one of your detector rails there. And then you can draw the line here of powered rails on top of these hoppers. Now it's important that all of these are powered because otherwise the distribution into the furnaces will not be even. Now you do pretty much the same thing on the other side here. You take two blocks and then you place another block up top, top like that. Place a temporary rail, detector rail and the final uh, power rail into there. Now you can remove that block and place a block on top of it and you can do the same thing on this side. For the fuel line you want to block there and then you want to place rails all the way here. Like that. And then you want this uh, minecart to rest over on this here side so you place two blocks like that and one block up top. There's a temporary rail like that. And then just a normal rail here, like that. I can remove that and place a block there. All right, we want to power these rails so we can place a block on top there and then just spread them out. It doesn't really matter. Well, let's try and do it the way I did it before, like that. And then power these and they will power both the top and bottom lines of rail, like so. Uh, next up, let's work a little bit on the fuel input. So we want the minecart to be fueled on that block there. So you place a hopper into that, another hopper on top, and then and then a chest going up and across like that. That's just so we can reach it because we're going to be standing over here or somewhere. So we want to be able to reach it. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention was uh, that you need a fence gate because, of course, we will need a fence gate here now because now we it's time to sort out the other side here where we have the ore input basically you want a fence gate placed on top of that rail there and you can test this out if you take your minecart with a chest and put it there it should stay if you release it it'll go like that so that's very nice okay so next up we want to sort out this minecarts functionality here we want to detect if it's empty or if it's full or whatever is going on with it Place a block next to it, and we're still working on the back, by the way, of the, the whole operation here. So place a block next to it, place your repeater into uh, coming out of that block, and place a the comparator, I mean, and then place a repeater like that. Now you need to have a block that that leads into, and then have it go around in a backwards L shape like that, and you can place redstone on all of these blocks. Now wait a minute, <laughs> this is all wrong. It needs to go the other way, right? So it needs to go in a proper L shape like that and then place redstone like that. Now, what is the meaning of all this? Well, if uh, the chest contains items, the comparator will, will light up. That will fire the repeater into this block and that will fire this redstone line here. And that will in turn open the gate. So we can test our functionality now like that. There we go. And now we have a hopper minecart in one of the furnaces. That's not good. Uh, so make sure you empty them out afterwards. So that's that. Now we want to do the lock. And the lock is going to be a repeater going into that repeater. Because that will lock the repeater if it is powered. Then we have a block after that. And then a block underneath it like that. And another block because I think uh, the actual lever is going to come on that block there then finally you take some redstone and just c connect that up and you can place a lever here now let's in fact do that 
and power that and you should see this repeater locking and now no matter how many items we put in here this minecart won't go even though this this uh, comparator is lit up okay one more lever uh, item and now we're on the fuel side of things and so what you want to do is uh, you want an option so that you can put fuel in here and have it go fill up the furnaces with fuel without you actually smelting anything so you want to be able to power this rail with a lever and it's super simple you just put a lever on that block there and that'll uh, when it's down the fuel cart will go uh, infinitely backwards and forwards emptying off fuel until you turn it off <clears throat> at which point it'll stop and then go back to its normal functionality of just going when there is ore to smelt all right we need some input system here as well guys so what you want to do is you want to have um basically you, well let this go and place two blocks like that and place a hopper leading into that block <laughs> and then place your block back and you can place your replace your minecart with a chest and uh, now if you lock this and wait for this to come back you can test out that this functions which is a quite important thing to do so take some ore put it in and see that it goes down and, and see that it goes up in the minecart with a chest and of course once you have done that you can actually start using your smelter if you see here now you'll see that it'll get two items per round here that yeah and it's work it seems to be working fine now you also want to do the charcoal box option and so to do that you need to have a block above here like that or even better maybe go with a slab because it looks a little bit better now you want to have a block behind the hopper as well that's the block that is going to push the charcoal box once we are, we are pushing it and then you want to have a sticky piston going into that block okay you want some blocks around it as well so that it doesn't fly away and on the left hand side block you place a button and from that block you want a repeater going into another block and that will fire the uh, the piston you can test that out now if you want some tips on decoration uh, here's some uh, it's quite nice to have stairs leading down to this stuff here so that you uh, stand up one block higher um, yeah it just uh, feels nicer really <laughs> uh, in my opinion and then so then the floor level is this here then uh, you you probably want upside down stairs on top of these hoppers so that you still can see the grates uh, and the grates you can have any block of course iron bars can look pretty cool and so on but what uh, i like is acacia trapdoors because you can open and close them you can reach into the furnace if you need to if something goes wrong or anything like that and uh, yeah they look great like as well they're great to summarize you can also hide most of the behind the scenes stuff here with blocks like this um, and you can actually put a block here as well although i like to keep it open so that i in a pinch can reach the minecart with a chest as well of course if you don't have bright blue blo blocks behind there it'll be even nicer <laughs> Now, you want to have be able to get to that chest, but you can still place uh, uh, stairs and, and things like that here as well. And then just one like that. Now, this obviously is no good match, but you can select any floor you want, of course. Now, over on this uh, side with the input here, you do want a trapdoor at some point so that you can reach that chest. But other than that, you can just fill this up with whatever block it takes your fancy. Make a snazzy design up front or whatever you like yeah so that trapdoor should probably go here and like this and then you can open it and reach the chest and close it and everybody's happy okay i think that's it for our super auto smelter guys i hope you liked it i hope you found the explanations satisfactory and that you understand how to now build this this super auto smelter um, and uh, if you have any questions, any questions at all about this build, let me know in the comments and I will reply unless it's really, really daft, the things you're asking me. <laughs> um, but anyway, thank you very much for watching and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye!